Hello and welcome to Inside Edition to discuss national and regional issues in depth. Our main focus today will be the Gulf Cooperation Council Supreme Council, the 37th summit, which closed last week in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We will be discussing the matter with political analyst Abdullah Al Jnaid. But first, this report for more. The 37th GCC summit came to a close on Wednesday after two days of deliberations between their majesties and highnesses, the leaders of the council. The summit resulted in the launch of the Sakhir Declaration, which highlighted the resolutions and decisions the leaders have arrived at in these tough geopolitical and socio-economic ties for the region. I can say that you know our region really is going through very turbulent times, politically and economically. And uh, the, the, the countries of the GCC countries, uh, the leaders uh, standing side by side and uh, closing the ranks is the most important thing, if you ask me, because uh, only that way uh, GCC countries can be stronger and more resilient against any threat, be it political or be it uh, economic. On the political and security fronts, the GCC leaders have vowed to continue their strategic defense cooperation and the conduction of joint exercises against any threats. They also called on Iran to stop meddling in the internal affairs of the GCC states and halt its proxy wars elsewhere in the region. The GCC also reiterated its support for legitimacy in Yemen. On the economic side, the leaders called for the push in joint projects in the pipeline, while also calling on unifying the regulations of telecommunication and ICT in the countries of the bloc, while expediting the joint railway network for the benefits it would reflect on the joint economic march of the GCC. The fact remains that it is the only functioning uh, Arab uh, body that uh, residents or citizens can actually travel uh, with just an ID. There is uh, an unprecedented level of cooperation between the GCC countries, despite you know the uh, difference in views on particular uh, points. Um, there is no uh, any other uh, you know political entity or um, a union that doesn't have issues. We've just seen what's happening in the European Union. So the fact that there are differences in points of view does not mean that it's not the most efficient and effective uh, Arab body there is. Uh, the GCC Gulf countries have done a number of projects in the area of cooperation. One of the major ones which has been very successful is the GCC electricity network. In other words, all the six countries of the, the GCC are connected uh, for electricity through cables which are extended to all of them. Building on this uh, success, the GCC leaders are now considering a similar network for water. And the water in this case, of course, is uh, a main source of uh, drinking water is from desalination from the Arabian Gulf. Therefore, the GCC have commissioned the study and a strategy has been developed for the sustainability and security of the water. British Prime Minister Theresa May addressed the summit and stressed the UK's unrelenting support for the GCC countries, vowing to further strengthen the long-standing ties between her country and the bloc in the wake of the Brexit, especially in security and defence and the economic arena. This is uh, an event, uh, a GCC event that has been uh, upgraded to a, a full GCC UK summit, uh, where uh, various topics have been discussed uh, between GCC and the UK. I think uh, this relationship has been elevated to a strategic partnership uh, level uh, where uh, GCC and the UK will uh, benefit from various cooperations, whether in defense, in finance, in security, and various other aspects, uh, education, cybersecurity. So a wide uh, variety of topics have been discussed and hopefully we will uh, see the fruits of it in the next coming uh, years. The GCC summit also called on further social integration in youth activities and education curricula that would instill the fruits of cooperation and unity in our youngsters. And so another summit comes to an end. The vision still remains a stronger united bloc with common goals and a shared destiny. Hamid Shaban, Bahrain International.
That was uh, Mohamed Shaban reporting from um, Al Sakhir Pass during the GCC summit. Uh, we welcome our guest, Mr. Abdullah Jnaid. Thank you for uh, being with us today. Pleasure. Um, uh, after watching um, this report and after you yourself also seeing the GCC summit and being a part of it, um, there were numerous resolutions in regards to joint work among the member states, uh, but its main focus was enhanced or was enhancing the economic status of the GCC countries altogether before actually going further to a union or any other step that might be taken. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Uh, I think probably uh, Bahrain Summit have succeeded in managing expectations. One of the most highly demanded, uh, let's say, expectation by all GCC national was the announcement of some sort of a unity. But unfor unfortunately that was, this is going to be delayed maybe until next or the year after mm -hmm. summit. But uh, the, the most important thing is catapulting or maintaining stability, which is at the present time, is the foremost important factor. And the GCC countries uh, have managed to show the ability, uh, the ability to, to enforce stability, to uh, interact with in, in other countries like Yemen, mm -hmm. and uh, preventing Yemen to slide into a civil, uh, full, fully fledged uh, uh, civil war. Yeah. Now, if we go back to the economy, economy is now is the um, area where. Uh, let's say, could contain politics and the aspiration of all GCC countries, mm. nationals. But what we need more than that is, given those, uh, let's say, resolutions, the ability to develop into uh, measurable, uh, 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 quantitable uh, measures or, or fruits of mm. those decisions. Yeah. So um, basically, uh, there has to be some kind of step taken in order for people actually to materialize these steps that are being taken in order to boost the economy. I think probably one of the most important uh, decisions that was taken is for the uh, private sector to fully, uh, let's say, fund the new uh, causeway between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the sort of catapulting or creating the right locomotive to drive the economy. Yeah. We, we have, uh, from the days of the pearls diving, that or, or merchants from uh, all the Gulf region, uh, you know, uh, lending, traveling, buying, uh, storing. So the relation is there. We, we find, if you, if you go to Kuwait or, or uh, UAE, you will find uh, Bahraini, uh, traditional trading family have already established roots and they are recognized and they are part of the economy. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you have the same, Saudis and Bahrain, uh, in Kuwait and otherwise. What we need is to give those entities the ability to be a fully fledged partners in the development. But if we're gonna mainly supervise or let's say regulate while they are out of the picture in terms of really uh, participating in, in creating not just the big picture, mm. but also the details of uh, governance of, of those, uh, let's say, initiatives. Yes, yes. So contribute, if you're going to reap the fruit, you have to contribute as well. Um, you, you touched on the point a little bit, so let's uh, talk about it. The meeting, the GCC summit also talked um, about the contributions to the country's plan uh, in, in uh, regarding the situation in Yemen. So all the GCC countries together, um, they have a plan. What are the contributions? How are they going to fix this situation? Uh, at, at the present time, on the table, we have the UN envoy, uh, let's say, um, last initiative. Mm -hmm. But what we need is the, uh, let's say, the cardinal three uh, fundamentals that was agreed by all, which is the Yemeni national dialogue. Second is the GCC initiative. Mm -hmm. Third is the UN Security Council 2216. Now, we don't to continue start deviating from those three fundamentals. The minute we start, then we're gonna prolonging the crisis in Yemen. Mm -hmm. This 
cannot be allowed to, to continue a going on matter. We need to have the UN a step back and engage with us in enforcing by bringing all parties the legitimate uh, representative, representative of the uh, Yemeni government was there in every aspect. They were yes. in, in, in Moscow, they were in Kuwait, they were in Geneva, they were in New York, they were in Riyadh. But we always find that the other party is not willing to commit as much. Now, mm. if this is the situation, the uh, allied forces need to bring those people to the negotiating table and uh, those three fundamentals or by force through taking them out of Sana'a. Yes, yes. Um, one of the three fundamentals, as you said, was the contributions of the GCC summit itself, or the GCC um, situation. Initiative. Initiative, exactly. One of the initiative, part of the initiative was um, uh, giving them, um, if I recall correctly, during the summit they announced 15 uh, billion uh, US dollars in order to help with the um, restructuring. Rebuild? Yeah. The well, rebuild. well let, let us be very frank. Yemenis have enough resources. But Yemeni problem is not funding the rebuild. Mm -hmm. We need to, first of all, rebuild the culture of that country. The Yemeni don't need to understand that they have some achievement that they could build on. One of them is the, uh, let's say, the outcome of the national dialogue. Now, that calls for a federal Yemen. Mm -hmm. Yemen cannot be uh, governed centrally couldn't. It didn't work. It will not work. It proved it. Okay. So the Yemeni need to understand that the only way out is by managing their resources much better. Mm -hmm. And the Yemeni by themselves have sufficient, you know, within the uh, private Yemeni sector, mm -hmm. they have sufficient well, they can initiate our role mainly to, min to help them maintain stability. A donor summit to uh, aid in the, in the Yemen reconstruction mm -hmm. is welcome, but we don't want to nationalize the Yemeni issue yeah. at the cost of the Yemeni. The Yemeni must take charge, yeah. and we had invested dearly in capital and blood yes. in defending Yemen stability. So the Yemeni now need to step up to meet us as partners and making sure that they are stable. Yes, yes. Um, another topic uh, that we found always at the center point of the GCC summit as well as the Manama dialogue, which came just a day after, was um, the issue of Iran. Now, uh, the uh, foreign minister uh, of uh, Bahrain said that Iran is the party which targets the sovereignty of the GCC member states and other countries in the region and undermines the principles of good neighborliness. How would the GCC uh, countries handle more interference from Iran? I think the GCC country have already passed the uh, point of no return in terms of uh, making sure that our sovereignty is by far going to be the uh, uh, point where no, no negotiation will mm -hmm. be ac you know, uh, accepted. Yes. So with Iran or with any other, so friend or foe. Yes. So for us, Iran had failed to achieve any, let's say, political, it did attempt. Now, did it achieve anything uh, within the hemisphere of the GCC? It failed. Mm -hmm. It failed because GCC resolve was there to make sure that defending first our identity, our heritage, and our fundamental uh, convictions, yes. we will not allow and now our boys fighting in Yemen and dying in Yemen. Our policemen are fighting terrorism in Saudi Arabia, Bahrain. Our you know, uh, security apparatus are fighting uh, uh, Hezbollah and other mm -hmm. terrorist group uh, infiltration within this region. And we are uncovering them and we will continue. This stability is a fundamental matter we will not tolerate any, any kind of attempts to destabilize the GCC country. 
We'll talk about this in a little bit more. His Majesty uh, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa said that the Gulf Cooperation Council was looking forward to more successes and achievements. Chairing the closing session of the 37th GCC Summit at Sakhir Palace, His Majesty King Hamad expressed thanks and appreciation to all those who exerted efforts to ensure its success. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب الجلالة والسمو الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسرنا في ختام أعمال الدورة السابعة والثلاثين لمجلسنا الموقر أن نعرب عن اعتزازنا البالغ باستضافة هذه القمة المباركة وعن تقديرنا العميق للروح الأخوية الصادقة التي ميزت لقائنا وجسدت حرصنا التام على أن ننتقل بهذه المسيرة التاريخية الرائدة إلى حيث تستحق متطلعين إلى تكثيف العمل المشترك وتعزيز تعاوننا وحضورنا الدولي خلال العام القادم للحفاظ على مكتسباتنا وتحقيق المزيد من المنجزات بما يلبي طموحات شعوبنا في الرخاء والازدهار شاكرين لكم ما بذلتموه من جهود خيرة ومساعي مخلصة فيما توصلنا إليه من قرارات سديدة ونتائج إيجابية ستحقق بإذن الله الأهداف النبيلة لهذا الكيان الشامخ وكما بدأنا على بركة الله وعونه نختتم أعمال قمتنا بحمد الله وشكره على ما تحظى به مراحل عملنا من توفيق وسداد مجددين شكرنا لمعالي الأمين العام ومعاونيه على جهودهم المخلصة والحثيثة في متابعة تنفيذ قرارات مجلسنا الأعلى على مدار العام وفي الإعداد والتحضير لاجتماعات المجلس الأعلى بما يضمن نجاح أعماله وتميز نتائجه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الكلمة Welcome back. Now, um, Mr. Al-Janaid, the closing remarks of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al-Khalifa uh, confirmed that all the GCC countries have to further enhance cooperation among them. How would this meeting boost the, um, the outcomes or the, uh, uh, the ties to overcome the challenges that are facing the GCCs? Well, put it this way. In terms of challenges and just creating more harmony within understanding the challenges. Now, we all understand stability is at the forefront of in terms of importance now security again it's a common goal mm -hmm. so what we need is to build on achievable common goals and develop th those the aspect within or the apparatus within in terms of security cooperation in terms of opening more uh, let's say borders in terms of borders of in areas of uh, common good between all the countries mm -hmm. and, and, and fields of industry, uh, education, health care. What we need is just to continue investigating where we could help each other yeah. achieve more. Yeah. Now, um, when it comes to challenges, um, you mentioned some of the things that basically uh, joint health care, joint education, that kind of stuff. But another challenge that is facing us, going back to the point we talked about before Iran, um, is the interference of Iran. How do you, or how, how do the GCC countries deal with that interference, knowing that Iran is a neighbor that is not going away? It is there, it is a country that is our neighbor. How do we deal with that challenge? I, I think we, we um, what we need to seriously think about is, if we continue thinking regionally, we're going to miss the main point. We need to start thinking uh, globally or geostrategically. Mm -hmm. If we just continue thinking about Iran being the only source of a threat to our stability and security, Iran's not going to go away. 
but we can contain Iran. Mm -hmm. And we have proved that we can do it. Iran at the present time uh, is facing major, major, uh, let's say, economic and social disturbance or destability within the Iranian communities. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if Iran is attacking us through certain aspects, so we need to s raise the uh, bar a little bit and make sure that they understand that either you play according to the rule or we can do exactly apply the same you know uh, game yeah. um, <coughs> still on the same topic before I go to our next point um, during uh, the Manama dialogue and also during the GCC summit a lot of talk came out about having a dialogue with Iran. Now, um, this talk came uh, because of an, um, several uh, invitations or political analysts, everybody putting in their own thing. Is that a possibility? Well, put it this way. It's not an impossibility, but at the same time, first of all, it is on the part of Iran to come and clearly declare its intention. Iran intentions are unfortunately, uh, w w let's, Let's talk, take Bahrain as an example. Mm -hmm. And one day you're going to see somebody from the Supreme Council say something and the Deputy Prime Minister here will say something. Uh, somebody else will come up and say something that is very unfriendly mm -hmm. toward GCC or in, in general or Bahrain or one, one country. And then you go to the Foreign Minister and you say, could you retract or explain exactly the official position of, of this? No, 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 they didn't say it. Now, if we're going to continue down this path, mm. okay? It's not going to result into any, let's say, more neighborly relation. What we need, and Iran need most of all, to understand that we can tolerate their existence, mm. and they have to tolerate us. So tolerance is the magic missing word within the... the um, they say the equation. But tolerance is not at the cost of the other party sovereignty. Yes. We will not accept any tolerance. We will not tolerate anything in terms of, let's say, uh, threatening any aspect of, of our sovereignty. True. We have the tools, and Iran understands. And tell you the truth, Iran is not a real threat in terms of the defense capability. Mm -hmm. They don't have a real air force. Yeah. Their navy is not as capable as they declare. Uh, their armed, uh, uh, armed forces, mm -hmm. the only thing they have is the uh, besieged mi militia, which is 1.5, mm -hmm. and it is mainly to safeguard and secure the position of the regime within Iran, mm -hmm. okay? And the only other fighting uh, force is the uh, Quds Brigade and the Soleimani. Yeah. Other than that, they don't have. Mm -hmm. If we go and review, when was the last time that Iranian Air Force conducted one maneuver? It only took a place something like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we go and check when was the time before this last time, it's going to be years. Yes. They are, it's not, and even even if they threaten us with their rocket force, fair enough. Let Iran be assured that we can observe the first strike. Mm -hmm. But Iran knows very well that the minute they decide on such matter, it's going to be a point of no return because we will, without the help of any, any a strategic ally, we can annihilate their air force and all their defenses. Yes. Um, the summit, uh, you touched on the point, and the summit touched on the point that um, starting from uh, joint cooperation in the fields of defense, security, and energy, but their focus during the summit was on the economy. Why? Well, put it this way. Economy is always the mother of all, uh, let's say, ability to contain all differences. Mm -hmm. If we continue on this path, I think we're going to dilute all those little uh, obstacles that may be part of or they say that now playing a major factor in delaying 
other projects like the Gulf Unity. Yes. So economy, once we find the economy, and especially when we have all the uh, apparatus of the government within the GCC, with the private sector, from all the GCC working together, I promise you, a lot of these are going to be diluted. Mm -hmm. And very soon, within three or four years, there's not going to be an obstacle anymore. We are, as GCC National, practicing uh, GCC, um, let's say, um, uh, nationality, one nationality. We, we, we travel, but we need to travel, hopefully, without needing to, we need to unify, uh, let's say, regulations, mm -hmm. governing uh, areas of, of, of capital movement. Uh, we need joint listing, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Saudi Arabia is, is, is going about and they just launched their uh, vision with SoftBank. And the first announcement is them placing, first of all, it was, you know, projected to be 100 billion US dollar mm -hmm. fund, sovereign fund. It over was oversubscribed in, in, uh, in a record time. Uh, the first step is this vehicle now, this locomotive, going to be one of our, uh, let's say, international locomotive in information technology and, and other fields. Uh, we need others, and I promise you there's enough funding for others. We have sovereignty funds in UAE, Qatar, Kuwait. Yeah. Where we have other method of on tools of financing, not the deficits, but development. We need to stop funding deficits. This is not the priority now. Mm -hmm. What we need is invest further in long term and not short term development. Yes. We need to really, uh, uh, let's say, accept authority measures. We have to accept them. It's a fact of life. Mm -hmm. We, some, some of the measures that was uh, placed was the um, uh, lifting of subsidies. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is readdress this issue from lifting or, let's say, taking subsidies out of the equation is managing those, uh, let's say, funds into the development. Or if we're just going to take the sub subsidies out without telling, telling the Bahraini or the Saudi or the Kuwaiti where this fund is going to go. Let, let, let it be part of his, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, development program, health program. We talk about creating vehicles. Yes. Could you imagine if we have some like four or five major healthcare companies offering services to the GCC countries? It's going to be huge. Yes. Transportation is the same. Again, we go back to education. Do we need to have something like 70% of our uh, you know, high school uh, uh, graduate go to university? It's wrong. We need something like 25 to 30%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? We need the rest to go into other areas, like vocational training. Yes. This is where the world is going to go. Very soon, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, we have... The, the human capital, what well, we could tell our partners in the GCC, we will train them mm -hmm. to your level. We will go to Simmons, we're going to go to Aramco, we're going to go to the airlines. We're going to tell them we have the ability to train. We're going to give those people fully trained. Occupational training. Every and all aspect. Yes. Industrial, services. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, Another big point that happened during the summit was that British Prime Minister Theresa May has attended the Gulf Summit as a guest part and took a part in the first GCC UK summit that has been held in the Kingdom of Bahrain. During her participation, she delivered a bold speech that clarified the British policy in regards uh, to its stance in cooperation with the Arabian Gulf. We meet at a time of great change in the world. Political change, economic change, social change. In almost every sphere, we are confronted with change and uncertainty. The risks to our shared security are growing and evolving as terrorists operate across national borders to plot attacks against our people 
as new threats emerge from the malevolent use of the internet and as certain states continue to act in ways that undermine stability in your region, undermining in turn our own security in the West and further reinforcing the need for all of us to work together. We in the West face the challenge of trying to manage those forces of globalization that in recent times have left some of our people behind. Here in the Gulf, you too are facing the challenges of securing jobs and opportunities for your peoples and building what I call an economy that works for everyone. In this uncertain world, people are searching for direction and leadership, and we have a responsibility to provide it. I believe it is more than a responsibility, for if we work together, it is also an unparalleled opportunity to show that we understand the scale of the change people need, understand truly what lies behind it, and most importantly of all, that we as leaders are trusted to deliver. One of the prevailing sentiments in all my conversations with GCC leaders over the last five months since I became Prime Minister has been this sense that in challenging times you turn to your oldest and most dependable friends. When I think of the growth of this region over the past 50 years, from the transformation of Dubai to the position of the Gulf as the UK's third largest export market, I never forget that the bedrock of this prosperity and stability has been the relationship between the Gulf and the West. Now, in this period of uncertainty, is the time to recommit to this relationship. That is why I am here, to signal my commitment to this relationship and to build on the foundations of our continued partnership in security and prosperity for decades to come. For just as Gulf security is our security, so your prosperity is also our prosperity. Already the Gulf is a special market for the United Kingdom. Last year alone, trade between the UK and GCC was worth more than £30 billion. At the same time, Gulf investment in the UK is helping to regenerate cities from Aberdeen to Teesside and from Manchester to London. I am determined that we should do everything possible to build on this and elevate our trade and investment to an even more ambitious level. So I will continue the work that the UK has been leading over the past three years to make London one of the great capitals of Islamic finance anywhere in the world. And as Britain leaves the European Union, so we intend to take a leap forward, to look outwards and seek to become the most committed and most passionate advocate of free trade in the world. For free trade makes us all richer, it creates jobs, it increases investment, it improves productivity, it transforms living standards and creates opportunities for all of our citizens. And nowhere is that more important than here with our friends and allies in the Gulf. So first, I am delighted that we agreed yesterday to set up a new joint working group to examine how we can unblock remaining barriers to trade and take steps to further liberalise our economies for the benefit of our mutual prosperity. For example, we have just reached a new agreement with Saudi Arabia to allow British businesses to obtain five-year multiple entry visas for the first time, creating new opportunities for more bilateral business. And we have agreed that in March next year, the UK will host an event on Gulf national transformation and economic diversification plans at the Mansion House, for centuries a home of finance and trade at the heart of the City of London. These steps are exactly the sort of measures that we can pursue together to advance everything that is possible from business and trade for the benefit of all of our economies and therefore all of our citizens. Second, I can confirm that the UK will take part in Dubai's Expo 2020, continuing the tradition started in Britain with the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations in Hyde Park in 1851. Dubai 2020 will offer an enormous commercial opportunity. There will be over 180 nations taking part, with more than 25 million visitors expected, from the world's top business leaders to its biggest investors. It is an opportunity which I am determined we should seize together. And third, I want these talks at official level to pave the way for an ambitious trade arrangement for when the UK has left the EU. And I want us to be imaginative about the scale and reach of this. I want us to explore whether in this dynamic and diverse market 
we could forge a new trade arrangement for the whole of the Gulf area. I want to leave no one in any doubt about the scale of my ambition or the extent of my determination to establish the strongest possible trading relationships between the UK and the Gulf. Welcome back. That was a powerful speech and we're going to take her speech from backwards. The last thing she talked about was um, the trade agreements and especially she specifically mentioned the free trade agreement between the Gulf and the United Kingdom. How would that help the Arabian Gulf um, as well as Britain? Um, at the present time, the GCC combined is, is are talking to the EU as a, you know, but we, we need to just work out a few details and hopefully uh, that could be reached. You know, having free trade as a GCC with the EU is major yeah. issue. Now, having free trade with the UK, mm -hmm. now what's the size of that economy? in comparison to Europe. Now, for us, it was a sad day for the UK to announce Brexit. Yes. And we hope that the UK somehow may manage to recalibrate some of the exit that will um, not, they say, take the UK as a market or part of the EU market. Now, mm -hmm. that will be something significant. But with the free trade in terms of one or one to one, uh, we could benefit as well on in areas of, let's say, research and development. The UK have massive uh, uh, output in terms of research in uh, diseases like cancer, uh, defense, communication, agriculture, uh, education. Now, all of these we could benefit from. There's also other areas of industry that may, b that the uh, UK uh, investment may seek the, uh, to establish joint venture or independent entity within the GCC. That would uh, end up in transferring of, of knowledge and capital, and we need that as well. Mm -hmm. So both ways are required. But we personally, I, I would rather see the UK as part of the EU because that, that's going to be far much bigger, bigger for us mm -hmm. and will benefit us much better. But if that is not achievable, we will go, well, we'll definitely will encourage to have that. Yeah. Well, um, for that to be achievable or not achievable still lies in the hands of the courts and uh, that's something everybody is waiting for. Mm -hmm. But um, the British Prime Minister also delivered a um, in her speech, her powerful speech, um, it included many bold points when it comes to the security of the Gulf. She made the security of the Gulf the security of the UK. She equalized them in that manner. Because to start with, for us, for any nation, for any people, to achieve your aspiration, you need stability. Mm -hmm. To have that stability, you need to have the tools to maintain stability. Security is one of the most important aspects to uh, have that stability. Now, the security of this region is an international, uh, let's say, uh, requirement because you talk about, uh, at the present time, we are still controlling something like over 34%, uh, uh, okay, 34 of the oil output export or, or share of the market. Mm -hmm. Now, Iran, uh, uh, India, China, the Far East are far much dependent on our production than Europe and, and the United States. That's why the, let's say, if, if India or China or the rest of the Far East or the lack of security, and we've seen uh, the effect of piracy out of the, co uh, the Horn of Africa. So we need to have uh, the security of the trade rule, the security of the country of the region is, a, is, is a, an important factor to stabilize markets and stabilizing the regrowth of, of economies within and without. Mm -hmm. 
Now, um, when we look at um, at basically the the contributions that uh, the British. Uh, um, that, that Great Britain has done to the or given to the GCC, and um, I know as a political analyst you look at this both ways. But basically, um, the opening of the naval facility here that uh, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales has opened, um, is there a significance to the timing where that came? It's it's not the matter of timing. You see, the responsibility of security it is bilateral or independently. GCC have and they are building. Uh, we've seen. Uh, since uh, uh, the uh, uh, eastern province, Saudi Navy conduct one of its biggest naval exercise. It was called uh, Gulf uh, uh, Shield One, and it was carried out in the N, the Horn, uh, the um, uh, Strait uh, uh, Strait of Hormuz, and the Gulf of Oman. Now, that area is, was always usually contested that it is under the dominant uh, domination of Iran and, and Saudi Arabia proved that's not the fact. Yeah. Okay, Now, the facilities in Bahrain uh, was approved by the, uh, during uh, uh, the Riyadh summit yes. and, and, and it was uh, funded jointly and it is established in Bahrain. But at the same time, Bahrain is going to be the headquarter for Task Force 81, which is the to combine DCC naval forces. Yes. Okay, that's two. We also have French facility out of Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Okay, we have U.S. facilities within Kuwait as well mm -hmm. for ground forces. Yes. Okay, what we are trying to do, and just now, Saudi Arabia have uh, signed uh, a protocol to train. Uh, some of their military leadership mm -hmm. officers, you know, level. Uh, so we we have a lot of aspect within the developing the bilateral. Now, going back to the UK having or establishing mm -hmm. what was given up in 1968, and uh, and as part of their policy w that was titled East of Suez, east of the Suez. Yes. Now, at that time, UK did, uh, let's say, let go of its um, commitment to the region mm -hmm. as uh, governing or, you know, under the uh, 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 Her Majesty's protection, yeah. okay? And w we've seen how the uh, region did evolve. Mm -hmm. We've seen UAE come as a United Arab Emirates, yes. which is a challenge that we are all very proud of. Mm. We've seen Saudi Arabia now, where, uh, okay, Saudi Arabia wasn't part of it, but we, we've seen Qatar, we've seen Oman, we all have, have developed. Yes. Unfortunately, the only thing that came out negatively out of that is Yemen. Yemen have deteriorated. Mm -hmm. And I wish Yemen at that time have, let's say, uh, adopted some of the, uh, what was proposed then. Yes. Now, um, the closing uh, communique has included many issues starting from common Gulf market. The uh, railway project and the military cooperation um, to the American Justa law and Iran interference. What is your comment on that? Well, put it this way, uh, the American will only see the, uh, I think, the understanding of our requirement or our, our description of stability may differ with the United States. But again, we need to tolerate their understanding and they need to, need to understand that they will have to tolerate. We didn't see eye to eye in a lot of issues. Yes. Okay? Uh, and I, everybody have read uh, those uh, few articles by Goldberg in the uh, Political, where he, uh, President Obama, called us few names. Mm -hmm. But Saudi Arabia and the GCC didn't bother to, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, launch a war of words. We 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 know our priorities. We're not going to be sidelined. We will not allow to be sidelined. But at the same time, we're, we're going to remain focused 
in achieving what is strategic and represents strategic aims for us. Yes. Now, um, there were some speculations that Bahrain summit was going to be the big announcement of uh, the union, but it didn't happen. Um, do you think it might happen maybe next year in Kuwait? Again, Bahrain summit was the summit of, a summit of managing expectations. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, His Majesty was, uh, in a way, knowing that we need some sort of a soft landing. Mm -hmm. That's why the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, His Excellency Sheikh Khalid, uh, came out two days prior to the summit and he says, there is no unity announcement. There is no any form of unity. This summit is going to be concentrating on one, two, three, and four. And that was it. So alongside the opening statement, the closing statement. Now, what we need to see between from the 36th summit, Riyadh summit, and Bahrain 37th and 38th in Kuwait. Yes. Now, we have some sort of a working paper mm -hmm. with, you know, end goals so the ball is moving yeah. toward that now if kuwait summit during the kuwait summit that was not announced okay we shouldn't be discouraged mm -hmm. let's build on what was achieved yes. sooner or later it is going to happen and if we think that the dcc as a unity as a form is a goal, it is a goal. Mm -hmm. But let us be sure that the safety, aspiration, and uh, stability of the region was a price that our soldiers, our political will, mm -hmm. is there to, to uh, let's say, safeguard those uh, achievements. Yes. So we hope that Kuwait could be uh, the end game and, uh, and something w will be announced, but I won't be surprised if that do doesn't materialize. So basically, to put it in other words, these summits are considered like check, uh, checks for our milestones no, until... No, I, 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 I think Riyadh summit what was a little bit different than the rest. Mm -hmm. Because if we go to the uh, summit, it's called for a higher role for the... Uh, uh, Secretary General, mm -hmm. uh, His Excellency uh, Zayani. Yeah. And for the first time, we've seen him attending uh, the uh, GCC Minister Youth and, um, uh, Sport, Youth and Sports uh, meeting. This never took place earlier. Yes. So we need to understand exactly that he, he needs to play a higher role, and he is playing a higher role. As, as, let's say, a uh, denominating factor. Okay, so we need the secretariat of the uh, GCC to be more independent, yes. to be more proactive. He has what it takes. He can do it in the uh, national arena or the international arena. Mm -hmm. So, once if that do materialize, we will see more and more of those little obstacles get diluted. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdullah al Jnaid. Uh, and uh, we would like you to thank you for watching uh, us and see you next week in another episode of Inside Edition.